So we saw Dark Phoenix, X-Men Dark Phoenix, and uh, here's a spoiler-free review, I guess you could say, is it's pretty boring. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's some action, there's some story, there's some characters, obviously. It's very just a movie. It is very much just, just a movie. It's not as good as First Class. It's not as good as Days of Future Past. I th think it might be better than Apocalypse, but that's because that was a very big train wreck. But, um, yeah, that's about it for spoiler-free stuff. I'm, now I'm going to go into spoilers, so spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. If you're still here, get ready to listen to some spoilers. Okay, so we start off with the X-Men going to go help a space shuttle, and when they do, Jean gets infused by the Phoenix Force, or whatever you want to call it, a giant solar flare, and then this alien species decides that they need to go to Earth to control Jean or take the power back from her. Meanwhile, Jean is experiencing new power. She ends up hurting the X-Men, and she runs away. She finds out her dad is still alive. So she goes to go visit her dad. And it turns out that Xavier blocked the memories of her dad being alive in order to protect her. And they really try to paint Xavier as the villain in this movie. Uh, where his ego is getting too big. And he is in enjoying the X-Men more because it makes him look good. And he's good with the president. He's good with uh, the humans which he pushes as this is the starting steps of creating a civilization where mutants and humans can live together. But meanwhile, uh, Raven or Mystique is saying, no, you're just pushing your ego. And there's a really weird joke, or not really joke, I guess just a really weird sentence, where Mystique explains how Jean and her are doing all the work, so they should be called the ex-women. And... I don't know, this joke really just felt out of place. Because it was just like the one time, it was just literally just one time where they brought that up. Other than that one scene, there's never a moment where the women are like, we're doing all the work. But I mean, you know, granted, these comics were made a long time ago when it was just like marketing to dudes. So no, duh, they're called the X-Men. But I will say, people who steal the show... I guess is definitely Storm and Jean. Uh, Mystique or Jennifer Lawrence. I just couldn't. I felt like she was. She didn't want to be there, is how I felt. And uh, major, major spoiler. She ends up dying because Jean pushes her into like this wooden spike thing. And I guess that's enough to kill a mutant. <laughs> it didn't really look that bad. I seriously thought she could have lived but I guess she can't which seems really weird it was a really weird death because it happened so suddenly and it seemed like an injury that a mutant would be able to withstand but I guess I was wrong and um <laughs> but yeah Jean ends up killing Mystique and then she ends up going to go find Magneto and you know he he kind of devolved in this movie he was he didn't really stand out and he more so just kind of was there you know like Magneto wasn't the main villain and Ma and he wasn't like really a strong character he more so seemed like he was passive to the point where he figured out that Mystique died so then that's when he decided to take action and oh my god speaking of action okay so um I know with these more more recent and maybe with all the X-Men movies there isn't necessarily the best action scenes. They're not really, you know, it, like, how do you mess up having these group of mutants having these very unique powers and make really boring action scenes? Well, look no further than Dark Phoenix, where there is an action scene that is Magneto and his group trying to cross the street while Xavier and his group try to block him. <laughs> And that is the action scene. And it's just, it's boring. I don't know how else to explain it. It's not exciting. Like, Storm has the most exciting 
action scenes because she has a more exciting power. But a lot of it is focused on Beast just jumping around and being a beast and jumping and jumping. And Cyclops just shooting beams and shooting beams and shooting beams. And eh, it it doesn't really work for me. I more so enjoy the powers where it's like Storm, where she has, she can control the weather or elements of the earth. And Magneto, where he can, he can like move metal objects. And then you get to like, boring laser shooter and boring blue monkey that just jumps around nightcrawler was very underused in this movie until like towards the end but very much he was just like he just was a teleport machine like he didn't do much he was just it was just nightcrawler teleport me there nightcrawler teleport me here and that was about all he really did and then oh my god i just remembered i just remembered that uh they completely take out quicksilver in this movie like he's in the beginning but then when they when when uh mystique dies he ends up getting hurt to the point where he's no longer in the movie so if you like the quicksilver scenes in the previous x-men movies there's only about one or two i think two two quicksilver scenes and they're really really quick <laughs> ironically enough but then there's the aliens and if you don't, if you've seen the trailer, or if you've seen the movie, you know that the alien is this uh, blonde-haired woman, and it's pretty boring. <laughs> like, I get, in order to save on budget and not do alien CG, that they made her, or made the alien stay in its human form, but it was pretty boring when it's just some blonde lady versus a redhead lady, <laughs> like... It wasn't interesting, and it really, really looked weird. So, uh, after the uh, crossing the street scene, they end up getting captured, and they get put on a train where they're going to go to a containment facility, and the aliens end up attacking. And instead of it being very clear and obvious that they're aliens, it's just a bunch of random people. Like, it's literally just a bunch of random people. I think one of them wears, like, a security officer outfit. And the other ones just look like normal people. Like, just normal people. And they're ripping apart this train. And the X-Men are fighting them with a little bit of the uh, uh, Brotherhood of Mutants. And, you know, power levels are really weird in this. Because these aliens, they... They, they have this ability where they can, like, warp your body, I guess. They have, like, telekinesis. But they don't use that power when they're fighting the X-Men, which, if they did, they'd very obviously win. So it's kind of confusing. And then the X-Men also, like, their powers barely scratch or hurt the alien people. It's not until Jean decides that she is the Phoenix. That's another thing. Uh, this entire movie, Jean is... And they're confused and scared about her new powers. She doesn't really understand what's going on. And then at the end, it is very much just like, I've accepted that I have this power. So now I will use this power. And it's just like, really? That was that was it? That was there was no like big revelation or some grand vision that she had or something. It was more so just like, oh, I have this power. Well now I'm gonna use it because I have this power. And she uses the power. And then she ends up saving the day and part of, so keep in mind, they never refer to this uh, power as like the Phoenix Force. They just refer to it as the power. And the only time a Phoenix is mentioned is because the kids at the Academy of the, of the X-Men, they're calling her the Phoenix. And that's the only mention, and it's about like 20 minutes in into the movie. It's not until the very, very end where Jean decides that she is going to destroy the blonde-haired lady, or blonde-haired alien lady. And she flies up into space and does a huge, like, solar flare explosion thing. And it turns into the shape of a phoenix. And I guess that's supposed to be the big reveal, is that the power really is a phoenix. Uh, it, it was kind of more funny than because I just imagine the average movie goer going, "Oh, Phoenix!" Like, <laughs> you know, 
it it was it looked cool i don't know it, it looked pretty cool and then there's they try to you know end it because this is the the end of the x-men as far as fox x-men because now they're going to go into mcu hopefully they'll have a much better time in the mcu and there'll be more uh how should i say better action scenes and better understandings of their powers and what their power level is because in this movie Jean is apparently off the scales like she is beyond reading on the power level but her powers don't seem crazy like she doesn't do anything to the point where it's like she is beyond any mutant like remember how apocalypse was really underpowered like how apocalypse could have like he's way way stronger but for some reason he just he he got defeated by Jean, and it was like all Jean did was scream at him. But anyways, that's apocalypse. That's we don't talk about that movie. Uh, but yeah, Dark Phoenix. I would say it's it's not bad. It really isn't bad. It's just really boring and mediocre. It's a mediocre finish to the Fox X Men, and. I really wanted more. I really did. The Phoenix is a very important character. And it just wasn't done that right. And and this is more so just my personal complaint. Is that there was no Wolverine cameo. And and I know, I know, being a Wolverine fan is just like, it's so basic, I know. But I like the Wolverine, I won't lie. I really do. I wish he had some kind of cameo or some kind of mention or something. Maybe there was, but I just didn't see it in the background. But to be fair, I halfway through the movie, I ended up almost falling asleep because I was just waiting and waiting. I thought this movie was two hours long. Turns out it was only like an hour 30, I think. I don't know. But yeah, I would say watch it if you're a real X-Men fan and watch it if you have nothing better to do. But that's just my opinion. Anyways, so check the links down below and subscribe for future rambles.